Hello, crafty friends. I am Courtney Brickner, owner of The Crafty Brick, and I'm very excited to share a project with you today using Citrus Strip. Now, you might have seen Citrus Strip etching tumblers in the past, but I have a new technique that I want to share with you that makes it a little bit easier to do the tumbler and allows you to walk away and not have to really watch and make sure that the citrus strip doesn't drip down the sides of your tumbler. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well as how to design um, a monogram with this butterfly shape using only three shapes in your design software. I'm going to be showing you in Leonardo Design Studio from Caesar and I will be cutting with the Juliet today but you can do this on any machine and you can do it using any software. I'm also going to show you a few other tumblers at the end of this video because I've never had problems with tumblers working with the etching and the citrus strip, but I've heard from some people that not all tumblers work. So I have multiple tumblers here. I'm going to be doing the same process. So at the end of this video, I'll be able to show you, did these other tumblers work and see how it goes. I'm looking forward to sharing this process with you and I really hope you enjoy it. So let's get started. Okay, let's first start with the supplies that we're going to need. First and foremost, we definitely need the citrus drip. So you can get this at Home Depot or Amazon or any other um, you know, home improvement store. And then we're going to be using a powder coated tumbler. This one I got from Michaels and like I said previously, I'm going to be testing out multiple tumblers at the end of this video so that you can see how each of them works with our citrus strip gel. And then we're going to be using, since the citrus strip is a chemical and it's for removing paint from furniture, you wanna make sure that you've got some gloves to protect your hands. You wanna be safe when you're doing this project. And while we're talking about protection, now I want to make sure that you've got a plastic bag. I'm just using a trash bag because I want to spread that out over my table, kind of, you know, like that when I'm working with the citrus strip. Because the citrus strip is a stripping gel, it will remove paint from your surface. So if you don't have something to protect your surface, then you run the risk of actually ruining your work area. So I suggest using a plastic bag as opposed to like putting paper down, because if you put paper down, then the citrus strip can just bleed right through the paper and still get onto your surface. So I definitely um, recommend that you use a plastic surface to protect your area. So we've got a little cup, little plastic cup and a popsicle stick. This is what we will be putting our citrus strip in. You really do not need a large amount of citrus strip in order to complete this project. So we'll just fill it up a little bit and we'll apply it after we put on our gloves with our popsicle stick. And I've also got this cup holder that I used with making a dry erase board that I got from the Dollar Tree and pool noodle that I cut in half and then I just use a glue gun to attach the pool noodle to my dry erase board. I use this when I place my cup and I hold the cup in place so that it doesn't roll side to side and just makes it easier to work with when I'm applying the vinyl to the cup. Now, if you don't have a cup holder, totally fine. You can also use a scraper tool. Um, if your scraper tool has the grooves in it, you can just place your cup here and turn it to the side so you can see a little bit better. And it just fits right on there and it doesn't move either. So that is another option. And while we're talking about the scraper tool, you actually need the scraper tool in order to make sure that you can decrease the amount of air bubbles that you have on your design when you place it on your tumbler. Next up, we are going to have some adhesive vinyl. I'm going to be using this color today. It really doesn't matter. Typically, I like to use colors that I just don't use a lot because we're going to be making a stencil. I am using Orichal 651. So I just have this because I didn't have the package to show you for that one. So it's Oracle 651 Permanent Adhesive Vinyl. I like the permanent because I feel like it adheres really nicely to the tumbler and makes it so that no citrus strip seeps out onto outside of my design when I'm making it. So I use the Oracle 651. Then you also will need the transfer paper. Today I'm just using some Caesar transfer mask and you will be using that to apply 
your adhesive vinyl to your tumbler. You will also need your weeding tool because we will be weeding our design after we cut it on our cutting machine. You will need a sponge that has a rough side and then just the regular sponge side we'll be using this to scrape off the powder coat finish after the citrus strip has been sitting for a period of time. You will also need just some painter's tape because the method that I'm going to be showing you today that allows you to kind of walk away from your project while it is um, working, while the citrus chip is actually working and peeling away the powder coat finish, you will need the masking tape and these index cards. I use two index cards. I'm going to be cutting them in half and I will show you that later on in the process, but I like to use index cards. If you don't have index cards, you can also just use regular cardstock for that part of the project. So lastly, what we are going to need is just some paper towels because we will be using that to wipe away the excess citrus strip after it's been sitting and we're ready to rub it off and reveal our beautiful design. So now that we know all the materials that we need, we will jump into the computer and I will show you how we're going to make our design in Leonardo Design Studio. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, we are here in Leonardo Design Software and we're going to go over and click Design on the left-hand side and then our canvas will open up. Oh, there we go. I'm like, what is it doing? Okay, so we are going to make a butterfly that we're going to use on our tumbler today. So the first thing we're going to do is create a stencil because we're going to be using the stencil to put the citrus strip in. And we're only gonna be using three shapes to make this butterfly. So we'll go down here. These are all our tools down here at the bottom. We're going to go to shapes and I'm going to click on a heart. So let's bring that heart up to our canvas and I want to make it just a little bit shorter, a little bit wider, and we're going to rotate it around here to the side. But we want it to be um, not crooked. Let's see, do I like this? Okay, I'm gonna make it a little bit wider. There we go. Now I'm gonna come down here to this little line with the arrow, this is our scale section. I'm gonna come to this rectangle with the plus sign and click that because we're gonna duplicate our heart. And I'm also going to come down here and I would like to mirror it horizontally. So there we go right there. Let's highlight both of them. I want them to align the bottom so that they are even. Then we will, so these are the wings for our butterfly. Now we're going to go over to our circle. We're going to add a circle to the canvas and I would like to make it a little bit narrower so it's more of an oval. This is the inside of our butterfly, the middle of our butterfly. Let's see, is that good? I think I want it a little bit taller. All right, perfect. And now let's work on our antennas. So we've got two shapes that we just used. We used two heart, or we used a heart, we used a circle. Now we're going to come and do square. And I would like it to be a little bit thinner because we're making it a rectangle. These are going to be the antennas. Let's make it a little bit smaller, a little bit shorter. Um, so we're just dragging the sides and bringing the top down a little bit. All right, so I think that that is a good size that I like. Probably can be a little bit shorter. All right, 
Now let's put it right here with our, the kind of the middle of our butterfly. And we are going to warp it. So we're gonna come down to the little window pane right here. These are all of our warp tools that are available. We're using the Leonardo Design Studio Pro. So these features are, the warp tools are not available on the basic edition, but they are available for the pro edition. So we're going to do the mesh warp tool and you see that it's got all of the little points there. Those are all of the spots that you can edit this shape to make it the shape that you would like. So I'm actually going to zoom in here. I'm gonna click the magnifying glass because I wanna zoom in a little bit better so that we can see exactly what we're trying to work with here. So now I'm gonna click it again and do the warp. And I wanna tilt that to the side a bit and then bring these middle points over because I want the antenna to be bent a little bit. Let's see here. That one is over a little bit too far. Let's see how this looks. I think I want this one over a little bit more too. Okay. All right, let's click the little select, the arrow down here, and that sets your warp into place. And what I want to do is tilt it. I'm going to take this little green, click the green circle right here, and then you'll see the arrows pop up. I want to tilt it a little bit over to the side. And it's a little wider than what I would like it to be. There we go. I think, actually just a little bit longer. There we go. I think that is perfect. So now let's go back down here to our duplicate. Our arrow is, or our antenna is right here. We're going to flip it again, just like we did previously. Now I'm using Leonardo Design Studio, but you can do this in any design software that you use because um, we're just using basic shapes and I want to line these up on the bottom here. Basic shapes, so there's nothing really like special about what I'm doing with the designing. I'm just showing you how you can create this design using any design software that you would like to use. And we've already used circles. We're going to use one more circle here. And this is going to be our antenna, the little ends of our antenna. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Okay. And then let's bring it right over to the end here. Make it a little bit bigger. Can't be smaller than the antenna. Oops, clicked the wrong thing. There we go. Okay, now let's duplicate this down here our duplicate button and we will bring one more little circle to this side okay now we have the the body of our butterfly i am going to click 100 again we don't really need to be in the magnifying area right now. Let's highlight the whole thing and we are going to weld it together. So the weld um, button is down here with these two squares that are right next to each other on top of each other. So we will click weld and now it is all together as one piece. Let me show you just how, let me go edit and undo what we just did undo my weld oh oops let's let's redo that that's what i'm trying to do so you can see that we're not welded when you go hover over one of the shapes you'll see the green outline so that means that each piece is an individual piece 
So if we were to try to move it, then it would not all move together. So that is why we need to weld it. Since I moved it, I just want to make sure that those are still on the bottom together. And make sure that that is even. Oh shoot, what am I doing? I'm moving the antennas. Now I need to zoom in a little bit more. Okay. There we go. Now let's zoom out. Now we wanna highlight the whole thing because we definitely want it all to move together. So now it's all one shape since we welded it. Now what I would like to do is to take one more circle because we are going to, let's change the color. If you go over here to the right side, you can use the color wheel and change this circle any color that we would like. So it's really simple to change the colors of it. I'm just changing the color because I would like to be able to see where it is because if it was black, we wouldn't really be able to see it. And I'm gonna zoom in again. Let's highlight this, zoom in. Okay. Just so we can get our circle exactly where we would like it on our butterfly. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit over here. Is that a good spot? Let's see. Just make it a little bit bigger. All right, I think that, and then you've got the hints down here in the bottom right corner. When I'm clicking on this circle, it's telling me if I want, if I press shift, I can constrain to horizontal, control, constrain to vertical, and alt apply a duplicate. So it's got some shortcuts down in that bottom right corner to give you tips on shortcuts to use to perform functions. And if you've got the mouse hint right here, if you've got that clicked off, then you won't get the hints. But if you have it checked, then you can see the hints. All right, my friends, this is good. So now what we are going to do is come down here to our remove front. So I would like to remove that circle from the butterfly. So I just click remove front and it takes that circle out. It's just kind of like the slice feature on Cricut. So I want that to be a hole right there because now what we're going to do is add our monogram. So let's click text and I'm going to click C and I know I'm using round monogram, so I'm using mount, round monogram left. Let's put that one right there. And then I'm going to duplicate that. Oops, moved the wrong one. Let's move this one and double click it will open back up the text box i want this one to be e but i want the round monogram center and then we will duplicate it again and double click and we will do round monogram left oh no round monogram right sorry All right, let's get these. I'm highlighting, I'm using shift to highlight all three of them. And I want them to be spaced apart evenly. So now they're spaced apart evenly. I'm going to make them a little larger in the circle. And bring them to the center. 
Okay, so now we've got our monogram in the center of our butterfly. Let's click the 100 button down here and let's highlight it and group it all together. But since we want to make a stencil, we're going to draw a shape because we're going to make it so that we've got a stencil. We don't really want to just cut out just the butterfly right here. We want to weed out the butterfly, but we want a part around it so that it is a stencil. So let's draw one more shape. We're going to create a square here. Let's make it a different color so that we are able to see it. This works. And let's send it to the back right here. Send to back. Make it a little bit wider. All right, now let's highlight everything and remove the front. So now we have our stencil cut out. So this is the part where we're going to apply the citrus strip and the initials. So that's the part that is going to come off of our tumbler. But we have our background here so that we can apply that to our tumbler and all of that area where the vinyl is covered will not be affected by the citrus strip so we will be left with just our butterfly shape so now we will send our design we've got select artwork only so this selected artwork and we're going to move each color layer to the origin we'll click send and we'll see right here it is ready to send to cut and we will send it to the cutter. So Juliet is really fast, but not this fast. I sped this part up just a little bit so you can see that she's cutting it, but um, it's not real time. And then when it finishes, I just go ahead and feed it to the front because we're ready to cut it out. One little trick that I like to do is use the little fold hinge and I take my blade and just cut along that hinge so that I have a nice clean cut whenever I'm working with my materials. So we'll push Juliet out of the way and cut off the excess material that we don't need and we're ready to weed our design. I love having the weeding box because it makes it really easy when you are working with a stencil. So I know that I've got enough material on the outside of my design that I will not have citrus strip touching the design and making it uneven on the edges or things like that. So I like to have the weeding box there. So now that we've got it all weeded, we will go ahead and apply our transfer tape to our design and we'll put that on and then we will be ready to apply it to our tumbler. So I start in the middle of the design and I use my um, scraper tool to go ahead and make sure that it is applied nicely to my transfer paper so that it's easy to take off. And then I've got my Dollar Tree DIY cup holder, which is perfect with the pool noodle and my dry eraser board. Um, I go ahead and I start in the middle applying my design and rub towards the edges. I start in the middle so that I can decrease the amount of bubbles that I have in the transfer or in the vinyl. And then I take my scraper tool and make sure that I really have smooth edges. It's really important to have the smooth edges around your design, not necessarily on the outside parts, but right here on the edges of the butterfly, we do not want citrus strip leaking through on the edges and that's going to give you an unfinished look. So we want to make sure that all of these little spots around the butterfly are nice and smooth and, and there are no gaps or wrinkles. Next up is the little trick that I have started doing to make it so you don't have to sit with your tumbler while the citrus strip is sitting on it and make sure that it's not running down the edge of your tumbler. So I take some index cards, I take two pieces and I cut them in half um, sometimes long, sometimes short wise, depending on my design. But then I take a little painter's tape and apply it all the way around my design onto the tumbler. The point of this is so that there are no little gaps where the citrus strip can ooze out and slide down the tumbler because you have to keep the citrus strip on for an hour 
And coming back constantly to check to make sure that the citrus strip is staying where it should is kind of annoying. So I like to make sure that I put the tape on the front and the back and it holds up these index cards so that it really makes a barrier for the citrus strip and your design. So I think that this works really well. I've used it quite a few times. Just make sure that there are no holes that the citrus strip can leak out of because the citrus strip is going to um, erode anything that it comes in contact with. So I like to just make sure that it is nice and secure all the way around. Um, you see this little gaps here in the corner. I just add a little tape just to make sure that the citrus strip is not going to leak out anywhere that I do not want it to. So when we've got it all nice and secure, then we are ready to apply the citrus strip. For this next step, I really just like to make sure that I am protecting the surface that I'm working with as well as my hands because we're working with a chem chemical that actually strips away paint. So if you have it touching your surface, it can strip away um, your surface as well. So just make sure you're protecting it. Then I pour the citrus strip into a little cup. It really doesn't take too much to make this project. So I pour it in a little cup and then I take my um, popsicle stick and I start to apply the citrus strip around my design. I try to make sure that I put a really nice amount covering the entire stencil um, to make sure that all of the parts have citrus strip on it. And I try to make sure that I can't really see the color of the tumbler through the citrus strip. I mean, you're obviously going to be able to see it a little bit, but I want to make sure that it has a nice thick layer so that it works well. Then I come back and I check on it. It's about 49 minutes. I just want to see with my little scraper tool, is it peeling off really easily? I feel like it's okay, but I think that it could be a little bit easier. So I'm just going to smooth this back out, let it do a work for a little bit longer, and then I'll come back and check it in an hour. Okay, so now an hour has gone by. I get my little paper towel and start to wipe off the excess citrus strip. And you can see that it just wipes off the material on the tumbler. So it is so effective. Then I start to take the rough side of my sponge and gently rub off the rest of the powder coated finish on the tumbler. It really does not take a lot of pressure to do it. You just rub it off. Then you take off all the tape and the index cards and your vinyl. And then when you take all of that off, you are ready to just go and rinse off the remaining coat of the citrus strip. There's really not much left because you wiped most of it off with the paper towel, but you just rinse it off with some water and your project is complete. That's it. Here are all the finished tumblers. I had some successes and some not so successful things, but let's talk about how they all worked out. Thank you so much for watching today. Here are all the tumblers that I have tried out. Here's the one that we made today. It looks so good, such crisp lines. This tumbler is actually from Michaels. This is a tumbler that I've actually had for quite a while and I've put it in the dishwasher. It works great. It's from Costco and it is a thermo flask. This one is a tumbler from Amazon. It did really nicely. This one actually took a little bit more uh, muscle to actually scrub the powder finish off than these other two, but it did come off and it is still nice clean lines. This one is from Five Below and it did great. All of, I really just like the way that they're such crisp, clean lines and they just really took the citrus strip really well. Unfortunately, this one did absolutely nothing. Um, this is a sublimation tumbler. It's not really a powder coated tumbler, but I just wanted to check. So if you're just out and about and you see a tumbler and it's kind of got a shiny finish, then that's probably not going to work. I had this on there for an hour and it did absolutely nothing. Um, all these other, they're kind of like, you know, the powder coating is more of a matte finish than this shiny sublimation tumbler. 
So that is the difference. One thing that also works, a lot of times you can just put a little citrus strip on the bottom in a really inconspicuous area and you can see, will this tumbler work with the citrus strip? So you don't have to ruin the tumbler um, or maybe like have it come out not looking really good. Put a little bit on the bottom, just in this little circle and see if it works because the bottom is, well, this one is not the same on the bottom. So that wouldn't work for that. But these are the same on the bottom. So that would work to just see, is the tumbler going to take to the citrus strip? I hope that you learned something today that you didn't know in the past and that you enjoyed watching this workshop. Thank you so much for watching. I'm very happy that I got to spend this time with you today and make sure you're watching and following on my social channels because I'm always sharing DIY and crafty content every day somewhere. So until I see you again, stay crafty, my friends. Bye.